Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode, we're gonna be working with one of my favorite all-time species, Gramosola poker peas, or the Chaco Golden Knee. Anybody that's followed my channel or podcast or website knows I absolutely adore these spiders. And this girl here is due for a new home, so we're gonna go ahead and rehouse her, and I'll share some tips for this species because I've had a lot of folks who've been picking them up lately and then asking me about certain aspects of keeping them. Now, I did do an entire video on these guys a while back where I covered them from the sling to adulthood, so I will go ahead and link that at the end of this one for folks who want more information. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at one of Tom's Big Spider's favorite spiders, the Chaco Golden Knee. All right, this is going to be a quick rehousing of one of my Grandma Sola Polka Peas or Chaco Golden Knees. Anybody who watches my channel knows I absolutely love the species. Might be my top favorite. I'm not sure. I just have a thing for them. They were one of the ones when I first started investigating tarantulas, saw a picture of one, immediately fell in love with them, and then bought two little slings that took pretty much forever to grow up. Now, this one here, I'm going to open this up. It's been a little, I was telling Billy beforehand, usually very, very laid back, but this morning has been a little bit of a pip, but that's good. We can show some not so beginner friendly behaviors if she acts up a little bit. But this one here, I've, I believe I got as a teeny tiny sling around 2015 or so. Right now she's about five and a half inches. So good size girl, not fully grown yet. They take forever to grow, but you can see right there, Billy's got a beautiful shot of the Golden knees that give it its common name. Absolutely love this spider. Now, if Billy backs up for a minute. We're going to talk a bit about what I had her in. This is literally the last exoterra, oh, look at her out there exploring, exoterra breeding box. I'm going to put that on so she doesn't go, that I have in circulation. A while back, if you go back through my library videos, you'll see that I got into these. And I did like them for a while. I love trying out different enclosures. And these were one of the ones that I ended up picking up. Oh, God, we picked up a lot of them. I used to find them on Amazon. The smalls, originally, you could get for like $9.99, which was a great price. And they had the medium. It was a little bit bigger. It was like the shoebox size that people would use for tarantulas that were very popular for a while, the steri Sterilite shoebox size. And then they had the extra large or large, medium, small, medium, large. The large was almost the size of the... Billy just points right back there. One of those in there, the Sterilite boxes, around those size, that size. However, the problem I have with these, and the reason why I'm not using them as much, is because they're really, really shallow. So if you look here, the actual dimensions of this are eight by eight by, they say it's like 5.75 or five and three quarters, or that would be, I believe, 20.3 by 20.3 by 12.7 centimeters. However, if you look down at the bottom here, there is more than a quarter inch worth of feet on this thing. Whoop. No, it's the sun. It's oh, the sun. In. Sorry about that here. There, there we go. go. Perfect. More than a quarter inch. This is really up close here. I'm kind of like uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> like right on top. I had to block the sun. So I'm like right on top of Billy here. Not in that kind of way. So what we have is almost like more than a quarter inch there. And then if you take the top off, You'll notice the actual depth of this, even though it says it's about five and a half inches, is really only about four inches of depth as I block this off again. So there's really just not enough room for substrate. Now, in theory, you could fill the whole thing with substrate because you have this domed top and that would allow some space. It doesn't work out that way. So as time went on and as I became less, I, don't, I won't ever say I was a substrate Scrooge, but the ones like the gab species, Grandma Stola, Brocky Pelma, Fauna Pelma, I would put in stuff with only like a couple inches of substrate. They like more than that. They play around, they dig. These guys especially are known as being bulldozers when it comes to burrowing and moving dirt. They don't actually make burrows. They just move dirt all the time. So I want to give them that option. So that's why I phased out of these. Are they poor enclosures for tarantulas? No, I just found things that I like be better. And one of the things I did like about them, like the... Sterilite containers is the fact that they are stackable. So once upon a time, I had like a row of, I think like 12 of these stacked up double. So like 20, no, row of six stacked up double. So like 12 of them, I had the bigger ones. This is the last one. So we can say goodbye to these. You won't be seeing these anymore in my videos. However, for people that use them, they do work. Now, what we're going to put her into is everybody's favorite enclosure, reptile growth or barbarous growth. I believe this one was sold under the barbarous growth name. This one here is about seven inches by almost 12 inches. We're going to call it 12 inches by about nine inches tall. 
lot of room in here for substrate. I got about three and a half inches of substrate in here. So this will allow her some more room to dig and burrow and push dirt around and just kind of entertain herself during the day, tearing up her enclosure. What we have for a setup inside the substrate is my own mixture of cocoa fiber, peat, shredded sphagnum moss, which I put in there, and some sand. We also have leaf litter. I just like the way the leaf litter looks. It gives a more naturalistic appearance. And then some green sphagnum moss, which is not moist. These guys do not like moisture. So I want to make that very clear. We'll get into this a little bit after I get her into the new enclosure. We'll talk about some tips for these guys. I've had some folks contact me really freaking out over you know how much moisture to give the slings and whatnot. So we'll go over that. So this should give her more room to do her thing. As far as these enclosures, the reason why I like them, very, very well ventilated. Ventilation here, here, here. They have the tops, which this is not mesh. This is perf. I believe that's what it's called, perforated aluminum or something. So they actually punch those holes in it. Haven't had any issues with them getting hung up in that yet, but obviously if I ever see anything, I will report it. And then there are little, apparently over in Europe, they give them little plugs for these spots here. This is for in case you want to put a heat rock in there. You can run the cord out. I just take basically a piece of plastic, like the type you'd have over, like, like I use old poster. We had poster frames. We had the plastic for that. And I just cut a little strip, not a super glue, done. But these are nice because you can open them up this way. You can open them up this way. You have a little feeding hatch, just really nice enclosures. Not particularly uh, expensive if you do shopping on Amazon. So enough talking about that. Let's get her into her new enclosure. We've had a thing lately where my new world species have been a little bit more crazy than my old world species. We'll see if that continues here. So what we're going to do is slide some cardboard under this. Try not to get my face in the camera. I can't see her. There she is. That squeaking is my heat going on because we're finally getting into those. Well, we, we basically skipped from summer to winter. There you go. What a beautiful girl. I love the species. As she settles in, I did give her a little burrow there. She can play with that. There we go. How's that looking? Gorgeous. Excellent. So a word about these, some tips, because lately I've had some folks that are picking them up and they're kind of confused because one of the things that we talk about is most slings, or all slings lack that waxy coating that protects them from becoming very easily dehydrated, which is why we keep most of our sling species moist. I always say mo uh, most because there are some sling species that do not like moist conditions. And this would be one of them. When I had mine, what I kept them in, and I'm going to have Billy come up here. We have a tarantula cribs enclosure, one of the little ones here. But I'm going to show this off because these guys are square. I originally kept them in the square Amac box ones that are just slightly a little bit bigger. But what I would do is when I would moisten down the substrate, I would only moisten down a corner and dribble some water around. Usually there'd be a cork bark in here or something, a piece of cork bark. I dribble some water around that and then let it dry out. And I'd only do that like once a week. So I wouldn't keep the whole, normally what we do is keep the bottom layers moist. I never did that. I kept a corner moist. And I had my first two were around a third of an inch they were in rather large enclosures for their size and they immediately burrowed down and things dried out during the winter. I was thoroughly convinced they had died. Nope, they came out around April or so, started eating again. They were perfectly fine and that's with the dry conditions. So you wanna keep things on the drier side. Now, if you put a substrate in that is too moist or if you put in, a lot of folks like to use cocoa fiber and they dry it out, but cocoa fiber when it gets dry, gets very, very fluffy and what they do is they put dry cocoa fiber in and they don't, uh, pat it down or uh, like really stamp it down a bit. If you leave the cocoa fiber all fluffy, they don't like that. They will tiptoe around on the substrate. They will hang out on the side of the enclosure. They will hang out in the cork bark. They don't like to walk on that. So that's a heads up. If you see the behavior, that's probably what it is. Also, if it's too moist, same thing. They will hang out on the sides of the enclosures. They will hang out in the cork bark. They will not touch the substrate because they don't like the way it feels. So a couple things to pay attention with. Also, these guys ate very, very well for me once they put on some size. As babies, they would scavenge feed. Once they got larger, they ate well for me. But if you overfeed them, by overfeed them, I mean feed them you know, two or three times a week, they will fatten up and they will fast for a very long period of time. So I get a lot of folks to get these guys. They're like, they were eating great for a month. I was feeding them every day and now they haven't eaten for two months. That's normal. That's, these are one of the species that you're not going to rush that growth 
at all. You're just going to have a spider that gets very fat and stays in pre-molt for quite some time. So I'm not going to get into the specifics of the growth rates. They grow super, super slowly or the temperatures because I already covered that in another video where I think I did a pretty good job of covering all that I had to cover as far as the species is concerned. Know these guys do make excellent beginner species. They are good for slings to start with because they are so durable and hardy, but just know that if you get a teeny tiny sling, it's going to be quite a few years before you have a big, beautiful spider like this. Look at her like exploring. I love the little and she's like, okay, this feels pretty good. I like this. Oh, yeah, I do have a water dish in there. These guys are infamous for taking their water dishes, filling them with dirt. So we're going to allow Billy to back off while I put the top on this because I think she's going to say, hey, I want to come out and visit. Oh, and a word about these, which I've never covered before. The tops are held on by these little plastic rivets, and they have – oh, here's one right here. They have these little wrenches. You put the little rivets in. You don't need to put all of them in. As a matter of fact, the more of these I use, the fewer of them I put in. So I usually put one in in each corner for one of these, and which makes it easier to take them out when you need to take the top off. And there she goes exploring. So there we go. Grandma Stola Polkropies, Chaco Golden, the wonderful spiders, hobby staple. Again, easily my top three, one of my top three species of all time. Maybe my number one. I, I hate nailing it down, but uh, I, if I had to really pick one, this might be it. So again, always remember that although mine are very laid back, temperament may vary from specimen to specimen. And every time I do one of these videos, I have somebody who will come forward and go, hey, mine's a little more defensive, a little more bratty. And that's always something that we have to keep in our minds when we're working with tarantulas, especially the beginner species. They all have their own little personality. So if mine's very, very laid back, somebody might have one out there that's a little more defensive. That kind of comes with the territory when working with spiders. So awesome. I love these guys. I do think they make great beginners, but know that if you do get a sling, it's going to be a while before you have an adult. I have noticed that once they hit that like one inch, 1.25 inch mark, that's when they start putting on more size with each molt. So just a heads up there. Now I've had some folks contact me recently, a little concerned thinking that I was basically moving towards doing only shorts. I just want to say that's not the case at all. What I found is I've been very, very busy lately with school and all, and I haven't had time to put up proper videos and the shorts allow me to kind of keep people looking at the channel. Plus, I've noticed they're great calling cards for people to come out and take a look at the channel. If they see those shorts, I've had a lot of folks see those shorts, come out, subscribe, and then start kind of moving into the longer videos, which is fantastic. So know that I haven't given up on doing the longer videos. It's just time's been of the essence lately. And with the holidays coming, you know, hopefully I'll have some more time during holiday break to do some longer videos. But in the time being, it's a nice little way where if I don't have time to put together a full video, I can at least put up a short and kind of keep people talking about the channel. So before we go, I do have one question for everybody out there that's made at this point in the video. Those of you who watched me for a while know that every once in a while I like to throw out kind of a question to find out what people are watching or listening to. I'm a huge metal fan, huge music fan. And I have a couple bands that I've discovered semi-recently that I've been listening to obsessively lately. One of them is Orbit Culture. Absolutely love the music. We got to catch them with Avatar in Boston several months back. And since I've been devouring everything they got. And then the other one is Electric Callboy, which combines pop, some metalcore, but I just, I'm a huge closet pop fan. So I absolutely love the fact that they go from sounding like a boy band to a full metal band at some point. What are you guys all listening to, especially those of you that listen to heavier music? What should I be checking out? That's our question for the day. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle up there. Put some other videos in here. Probably, obviously, Grandma Solo Poker P is the original video I did that talks about their care. Something else up here. If you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Know that it usually takes me up to a week because I tend to do a few comments and then I answer the questions before I post the next video. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. Catch you all next time.